Hello everyone, Vasive here. Welcome back. Oop, lighters, lighters. This is more Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright Trilogy. I know that's backwards, but, whoa, but whatever, it's fine, it's great. Um, we're back to playing some more games. I'm excited to play. Uh, it was literally as I was walking down here and just checking phone, a super awesome, cool Melania statue is being made and I want it. And so I posted it in the Discord and Yeti and I have been talking about uh, Sister Frida he needs a statue for years and I posted that and he just is like and I just found this too and it's a dope ass Sister Frida statue and apparently it's it's not necessarily old but it's been out because it's it's not available anymore so was, I'm like when was that made available because in all the Soulsborne forums and stuff that I'm I'm on nothing I not heard nothing about it maybe it's because I did uh Dark Souls 3 like long after it maybe it came out before I even started Dark Souls 3 and at that top point I was uh I was just big into like Bloodborne I don't know but they both look awesome and we're both sitting here like how much money can we get for a, a kidney <laughs> it's slightly used, has had kidney stones. How much do you think we can get? Because apparently that Sister Frida one goes for 900 on eBay. And that's bananas, but it looks so cool. And I'm scared to see what the, the Melanian one is. I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even look. Oh, cause I have one, but I need that one. She's doing her bloom and it looks dope. Anyways, I need to not get distracted. Oh. Forgot. Um, let's turn on the captions. There you go. It didn't warn me that time. It did as soon as I clicked them. That's funny. Uh, anyway. Oh, I'm excited to keep playing Ace Attorney. I took a nap today. It's the first nap I've had since starting my new ADHD meds, which it's it's related, but today doesn't count because I haven't taken them since last Friday, and it's Monday. Um, because I had today off, there was no reason to take them. So I think that's why I was wanting a nap. <gasps> Ooh, so we had one. What's up, Brewster? How you doing, my dude? Uh, what's it? What else is new? Oh, yeah. So I put up the schedule for this week and next week. Next week's going to be a little bit sh unknown, maybe shaky. Um, because a lot of it's dependent on whether or not I get rebirth earlier in the day on Thursday. I'm taking Friday off, so we're going to be playing it all day Friday. We know that. But considering I might be playing all day on a Thursday, too, we might take some other time off during the week. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Ooh, excuse me. Oh, my God. Is it just going to be another yawn stream? I apologize. Oh, my focus. Oh, I've been jabber john so long as the controller turned back off where did we leave off uh 214 this one looks newer oh this one's newer right 214 yeah turn about oh edgeworth is um Did we stop in the middle of trial? I thought we like finished up a thing. Yeah, cause, cause we went to, um, maybe this was a different day I'm remembering, but I thought we went back to the, uh, the atrium or whatever, right? Cold night, the mist was thick as grits, so once I finished setting my camera, I got back in the car. I still brought my binoculars with me. When I heard the noise looking at the lake, I looked with my binoculars. Um. Oh, crap. I don't know where... Oh, I don't know where we left off, dudes. Something feels like it didn't save. 
which is weird because um when i was trying to load up my game it took forever to load save data like literally five minutes so i had to close it and start it up again so i hope i didn't corrupt something these are right right this is the most recent one it's gotta be Uh, maybe we'll go through it because it it sets us back at the beginning, right? Also, ugh, excuse me. You're right. It was a cold night. It was a cold night, and the mist was thick as grit. So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back into the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked for my binoculars. I don't care how many fun make objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. Okay, so this might be where we left off. Uh, press. So, how could you see Edgeworth? Now just hold your horses for a second. You hate the Yankee types. Types that never find a guy where I'm from. I thought we got to the point where she's like, yeah, I just wanted to be a part of murder investigation, right? Defense journeys have trouble with that as it is. Nobody loves me. But, well, excuse me. Also, that's I was wrong again. Oh, you know what? After my um, um, there we go. After my computer restart, I need to set up Karma's voice again too. Once I finished up setting up my camera, I got back in the car. The camera? Yeah. It's gone. It's gone automatic. There is. The issue here we are concerned with The issue we are concerned with here is Miss Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with this at all. Oh, but it does. Objection sustained. Ugh. It's not letting her answer any of my questions. What do we do? I still I brought my binoculars with me. Why? Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday you mentioned that you were looking out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars for that? We already did this, I swear. I've got doubts about your camera too. Was it really Was that really to take pictures of the meteor showers? Camera is irrelevant in this case. The camera is irrelevant in this case. There it is. You can't say that for certain. Uh, Mr. Ray, is the camera really relevant to this case? If you really believe it is, you may continue with this line of questionings. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Ray, do you wish to press further about the camera? Absolutely. This is make it or break it time. The camera is of most importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Here you will. He's hurt. You will just bring the word about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. The camera was set up to take pictures of the meteor shower. He's hurt. What made you choose that? lake to photograph meteors. You know the fog gets thick on the lake. It's not very suited for to stargazing. Yeah, well, see, I, I, I guess I wasn't thinking too straight, huh? Mr. Wright. Oop. Mr. Wright. I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. How rude. Now, wait a minute. What's up, Kira? Continue your testimony. You were saying how it was you that saw Edgeworth. <laughs> No unnecessary comments. I didn't mean to skip that. When I heard that noise come out of the lake, I looked in my binoculars. Why would you do that? If there was a heavy fog. How would binoculars change all that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him? Uh, I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm, you sound pretty doubtful to me. 
I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many fun karma objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in the testimony because it's the last thing I do. It was a cold night and the mist was thick as grits. Once I finished setting my camera, I got back in the car. The camera was set up to take pictures of the meteor shower. I think we already did this. Did I not save right? We did this. I must not have saved. See, thank you, Kira. We went back to the atrium, right? I don't think it saved. I didn't I even save twice? You are shooting or you're photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says who? Wait. idea nope it didn't save no i'm loading the most recent one so this 2139 they're all on the same date oh 22 Yep, I did load the wrong one. Oh, so much better. I didn't want to go through that again. Wait, why is she in prison? Contempt of court. Maya! Hey, Nick, it's you! I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. You did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see how she's doing. Any luck with Mia? Oh, that's Maya. Oops. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. Uh, that that's making me sad. She's thinking like... We only use her for Mia. I think I should probably have, probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Mm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. Have, have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said seeing this as said, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Whew. Oh, you wanted me to get bail money already. Get bail money ready. You can pay for me, right? Okay. Oh, boy. Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess I'll send you a bill or something. <laughs> Why do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? I didn't know I'm going to block all the things. I did so much work. Oh, I didn't even see you got a block. I think I had this other thing open. Okay, just learned a thing. Good thing I had this other chat window open. Because, uh... The combiner chat didn't even show anything got blocked. Getting my eyes thrown behind bars makes Carmen the biggest scum. Absolutely, yeah. Why did that get... I don't know why that would get... Flagged by... Automat, maybe the thrown behind bars thing, but that's that's dumb. <sighs> but guess what? I'm a lawyer. It must be nice, Nick. You can just let anyone say I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> must be your meeting as well. I don't know. With your clothes, I bet at least some people would recognize you. These are medium in training clothes. I wonder if I'll ever get a proper medium. What about large in training? Extra large in training? Small in training clothes. What am I doing here? Why am I doing here? I don't remember what happened, dudes. Obviously, we went back to the atrium, but I don't remember anything beyond that. And I can't bring her with me. 
There are fewer than there are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe was here today. Go to the beach. His butts here. I haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through paying through the nose on a date with the, the lovely Keyonce. Does this look different? The hot dog stand is closed. The Christmas fringe looks a little half baked. Then I read Samurai Dog. Someone needs to redecorate. Yep. Yeah, that's the same. Why is that? Someone like the uh the signs all blurred out. It looks like it's censored. Woo. If she fled arrest, she could be a small, medium, and large. That's true. Or like her stuff's still here. Or like woods. Oh, hey buddy. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial. The trial today. It. Uh... Yeah. What about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Or you did save Mr. Edwards, I guess. I was just... I just wasn't sure you... How to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks? Detective Gumshoe, any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? I'm Hito. Ooh, excuse me. Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. Just suddenly brought that up. Hmm. There was two witnesses. Ooh, excuse me, I apologize. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? So, so, sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge any information. Right. You're right. Well, about Prosecutor Edgeworth? Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? Oh, that's right. That thing happened, too. I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a prosecutor. And him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. That incident. <laughs> the DL6 incident? Yep, that one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I want to talk to you about Maya. Ah, she's not on bail yet? That's strange. I told him to let her go as soon as they had her up. Her, their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I had shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Oh, dip. Hold it. <laughs> really? Hold his eyes, Edgeworth? He was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm going to head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering how much his bail going to be. Don't worry about that. His Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. Fuck yeah, dude. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Oh, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Cool. Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. Don't push it. Should I observe this stuff again? Boy. There's food on magazines on the sheet. It takes pretty tough skin to camp out in this cold. Sign says no camping. Funny place to pick pitch or funny place to pitch a tent. I wonder why she brought a camping cooker with her. There's a convenience store right up the street. I guess she wanted to get into the outdoor spirit. I don't think Lana takes very care good care of her SUV. It's covered with tents. I can't believe anyone would drive that car down here. Lana's camera is starting staring at the like as usual. Even a dog like me can tell that camera was cost a pretty penny. Ooh. I hope she doesn't leave it out here to get stolen. Alright, is 
I don't think there's anything else, right? Let's go to boat shop. Looks like the boat rental shop is closed today too. Okay, so maybe we go to get Maya out. See if we can go. See if we can go do that. Hey Nick, you finally came. I just finished the paperwork. I'm ready to go. Great last, eh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like it was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Oh, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Uh, oh, that reminds me. Thanks for your bail. Nick Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. He said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. I've got to win the case, Nick. You got it. Bro, oh, what do you think we should do next? Kind of lagging in the clothes department. We should go to the park and look, look for Gordy. My brain read Boldy, and I got really excited. I was kidding. Oh, she was making a joke. Still, if there are any clues out there, the park's as good as bet, as good as a bet, as any. What do you say? Shall we head down there? Sure. I guess we're going back. Have you noticed anything lately? Hmm. You know, I didn't notice one thing while I was here in detention. It's really pretty comfortable here. It's warm, and they keep it very clean. I mean, have you noticed anything about the case? <laughs> well, not much more than you, no. She's probably still upset about Mia. I should leave her alone. Okay. I guess let's go back. Here. There aren't many cops around today, are there? There just were. They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Mm. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's Lana. I uh, really did it today. What? What do we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. You idiot. That's how you get over go to prison. Lotta. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? What did you think of what did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd been a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kinda convinced myself I had though. I'm sorry. I know it caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well memory is a tricky thing, little thing. Oh, I almost gave her I as a voice. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I, I witness a murder. Next time. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder? What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure, the trial's only sto stoking the flames of the Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to start them. All right, Lana. You go, girl. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. And she's spiritual. Medium training first. Yeah, why'd you make it up? You literally can do time for that. Lana, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That phone karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? Um... I thought this was to make supposed to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Huh? Hey! I see you looking thinking by how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, What'll it be? We got a deal or not? Well, what do we do, Nick? 
What do we? I don't even know what I'm making a deal to. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only excuse exchange for the only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Oh. Okay. Whoa, 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 Gordy! But Gordy doesn't. I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. That shows he don't. Uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You say something, y'all come to me first. Got it? Okay. All right. See you later. Fuck. That's gonna suck. Okay, Nick. Nick, let's get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean? Gordy, I sure do. Can we just make something up? Ron Edgeworth. We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay, and how do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist. That sounds like a nightmare. Uh... Larry wasn't here. What the fuck? That's new. Who put that up? That was not here like 20 minutes ago. What's that? Yo, Maya! Larry, what the heck is that? His shirt looks like it has two eyeballs. Oh, it's my girl Keonce's idea! It was all... If you, like, put to this here, it would be, like, really cool. Is Dude. What if his, uh, new girlfriend is Dommy Mommy? I suppose it could be, um, the assistant lady too, but he's like, oh, she's a model. She was cute. But they're like, pushing it like she's like a model model. It's definitely gonna be someone we've seen before, right? Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow, it's really impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot about people. The show's finished now, so she got him up for free. All right. Hey, Larry. When did you get that big thing? Huh? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Huh? Oh, right. The, the, the compressor was busted. Could that be what? Fire? Compressor? Yeah, it's a little unit by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the steel samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. And here is that you'd inflated it by yourself. <laughs> Yo, Nick! What happened with, with Edgy? We made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh? Hey Larry, did you know Mr. Edward's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. In the DL6 since it didn't happen. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it though. Hmm. Oops. I guess we'll do that. Doesn't that steel samurai look a little on place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Nothing about this steel samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh? Really? It looks pretty well made to me. I'm still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? No kind of serious like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These still samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. What's this machine? That, that's a compressor. Use it to fill that balloon up there with air. Oh, neat. 
It's got a repair yesterday. Man, a drag that was. Those flags look sadly out of place here. Flapping listlessly back and forth in a cold wind and a cold sky. I don't know. I think it gives the place kind of a festive atmosphere. It reminds me of the War of the Eyeglasses. The War of the what? Huh? What? You mean you don't know the War of the Eyeglasses? What the heck is it? Our local fire used to do it every summer. Huh? I guess we're the only ones. I ask again, what the heck is it? Okay. Is anyone gonna be here this time? It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all, I'm probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. Let me go on the boat. y'all well you find anything about gordy um no nothing i'll keep moving it gets cold out here at night time it's a little chilly i i think i have to sneeze oh whoa, whoa, no don't just go sneeze and shout <laughs> that was silly i told y'all no sneezing if you're yelling it shouldn't be going off so that was an explosion. Why would it go off? See, I said the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. Oh, that's why. It trigger on one of those Von Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's nice. But what about my film? Hey, hey the lady, fuck. <laughs> I don't have the money to be doing that. Fuck. I feel like man doesn't live in... Yeah, she... She lives in her own reality. Why can't I go to Rossman? Oh, do I have to go back home? Hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go and do something that's going to hurt Mr. Edward's case again. What do you mean again? Whatever. Have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. How is the investigation or how is the investigation proceeding? It's not really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to be talking about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. And the guy who got the loan suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. Nedworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. Hey, take his gumshoe. You know about Gordy. Monster down in Gord Lake? I personally know. Well, we're looking for it. Huh? Aren't you out of your mind? Yep. You got no time to go wild monster hunting. How about doing a little questioning for me, then? Oh! Her sense of gum, she was scaring me, Nick. Huh? Don't scare Maya! I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lana. Nick! Try telling him sooner next time! Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay! I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. Oh, fuck yeah. I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. What? Is it gonna be a metal detector? That'd be hilarious. Really? You can take it whichever one you like. Secret weapons? Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show you them to you. These are our best and brightest. You're using secret weapon number one. Missile! <laughs> what? It just turned goofy. M -m -m Missile? He's a canine. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Let's get him. He's a canine police dog. Still in training. Missile. Missile. Hey, boy. Look at the boy. We get a dog. Here he is. Hey, 
he's cute. Look at that cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us how? Shut up, Phoenix. The dog. I don't even care if he's the moral support officer. He's going to do great. Next, you can put weapon number two. A fishing pole. <laughs> Here, th this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe. We're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a monster, a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know until you try, pal. Okay, this next one is the last one. No, please, I'm over overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number two. A metal detector. I, I called that. Metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe. We're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. You might have been eating cook been eating soda cans. <laughs> well, which would it be? I want the dog. Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. Can't make up my mind either. The totally opposite reason. <laughs> oh well. Oh wait, that's me. Oh well. I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. Oh dude. Borrow one the dog. Can we borrow a missile? Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. He's so cute. Oh boy. Yo, we got a fucking dog. K9 unit missile borrowed from Detective Gumshoe. What did it say about him? Oh, I didn't even read all these. Who are you? Oh, Greg Ranger. Or Edgeworth, victim in the DL6 incident 15 years ago, a defense attorney and Miles' father. Claims to be an investigative photographer trying to photograph 40. <laughs> Often the cause of trouble. The victim of this case, also defense attorney in the DL6 incident. The veteran prosecutor hasn't lost the case in 40 years. No, I need to see him. There he is, the good boy. A K9 unit in training. Very cute with shining eyes. That was totally worth it. Uh, let's, let's bring him to our place. Uh, fresh air, I gotta say, freedom feels great. Prepare yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? Hey, this behaving is much more fun. It's not going to be so much when fun, or much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay your bail again. Yeah, go back to prison. Right, I'll behave. Oh dear. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Hey, look! We have a dog. Don't waste time showing me things. You have to get. You, don't get mad. I'm showing you a dog. You know the enemy has more tricks up his sleeve. He's bringing in another witness. Yeah, but this is a dog. That is far more important. Okay, I can go back here. Apparently, Mr. Grosberg is on vacation today. Well, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. Bummer. Hey, Nick. Huh? Missile's been acting strangely. Missile? Oh, right. That little creature of the detective. Phoenix, you're about to be on very thin ice with me. Yeah, I love little doggies. Good boy, good boy. Oh my god. That is a nightmarish picture. Whoa, what's wrong, missile? I regret. Nick! Missile! Missile! Well, oh, stop that thing! Cannibals eating my samurai dogs! They say he's eating all his food, huh? Samurai dogs. <laughs> well, he ate every single one. Sorry, Larry. Oh, God. I'm going to be so out of money. I don't even think I have money, but I'm going to be having even less. Sorry. Sorry I don't pay my bills, Nick. <laughs> it's going to have to this time. Hey, I, I, I got you out of court for free. 
<laughs> hey, dog. Hey, Larry, look, it's Missile. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Keep that mud, keep that mud away from me. What am I gonna do about the big boss? Is the big boss in charge of your hot dog stand? Nick, he was the stand is the front for mafia money laundering scheme. Maya, I think you should probably try to look a little sorry about what happened. All right. Hey, my poor dogs. <laughs> that was worth it. Wait, talk to him first. Nope. Hey, look, a dog. Hey, Lana. Oh, cute. He yells. He's a canine police dog. His name's Missile. Huh? Canines are the ones are the ones I use to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Cordy smells like. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Oh. I learned some oh, I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. That's fine a serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about the case anymore. Huh? Oh, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said. I'll trade it for the dirt on top of Gordy. What are you gonna do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investi investigative photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo up to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. A UFO. That's right. A, a UFO? Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo this time around, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Yeah, well, I'm a taking taking a break for a bit. Right. Why didn't the check mark show up? Maybe because it wants me to come back once I get more information. Let's see. Okay, move to the boats. Yeah, it's not here. Move to... Looks like I've just been questioning. Let's go back later. Guess so. Aw, man. Secret weapons. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Wait. Uh, yeah, sure, pal. I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. I'll take your pick. Which will it be? I'm gonna borrow a missile real quick. Can we borrow a missile? <laughs> sure thing, pal. Be good to him. Okay, but what if I present missile? Missile is the biggest star in the criminal affair. Where's he named Missile? Huh? Now that you mentioned it, I'm not sure. But I hear his aptly named for what it's worth. Okay, so I can switch out the secret weapons. Fishing pole. Can you run that flimsy looking fishing pole? Sure thing, bro. Well, if it breaks, be sure to dispose of it properly, okay? Uh, right. Detective Gumshoe's personal fishing pole, sadly flimsy and a dubious utility. It's funny, one day I woke up and wanted a fishing pole. You like fishing? Not even a living to it. A little bit. It's, I've never gone. I just wanted one so bad, I went out and bought it. I've never used it, actually. What the? Must have been one of those midlife crisis things. Yes. Everyone knows about the midlife crisis where you go out and buy a fishing pole. Hey, look at the fishing pole. You know you can't catch many fish in this lake. I'm not after small fry. I'm after the biggest fry of them all, Gordy. You really gonna try to fish out a monster? I say a bit worse, yes. Brings a tear to my eye in more ways than one. Hey. 
Uh, talk to her. Oh. Okay, Nick, this looks like a good spot. Good spot for what? Time to do some fishing. Look how happy she is. She's serious. Um, what do you need for bait? You need those hot dogs with the dogs just hate. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, figured something like this would happen. All right, figured something like this would happen. <laughs> we should have brought missile along with us too. At least then we'd have bait. Oh my god. <laughs> That's horrible. Nick, how could you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Some jokes are better left untold. Ooh, she hit me. Okay, let's just Nick. Look at her go. Just try not to reel in any empty cans or boots, okay? Here we go. Okay, ah, my leg. Maya. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> hey, uh, what are you doing? Sorry, Lana. Don't tell me I have y'all are some film company's payroll. Big payer. I don't have money, dude. My poor, poor wallet. Fuck. What a way. We're catching Gordy. A fishing pole? Are you out of your doggone mind? Yes. I mean, yes, it's a fishing pole. Oh. Huh. I never thought of that. Good luck. Thanks. I don't believe it. Oh my god. Um. Yep. I don't think there's anything else. All right. Give me the metal detector. Can we on the metal detector? Fair thing, pal. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for, for a monster. Anything is impossible. Anything. Metal detector borrowed from Detective Gumshoe. Makes a noise when metallic objects are near. A useful detection device. It's going to be actually like a tool, huh? Oh. Secret weapons three, borrow all of Gumshoe's weapons. <laughs> As you can see, it's a metal detector. We use it to look for bullets in the ground. If you can find that monster with it, all the better. I'm not so hopeful. I don't think we're gonna be finding the monster with it, but we might find something else. Let's go, yeah. Can I use the metal detector here? Nope. What happened? Hmm. Look what I got. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. I had to change his voice because his voice is fucking up my throat. I love how himbo. I love Gumshoe, dude. He's definitely a favorite of mine. Can you move? I keep thinking that means move for like them to move. Hey, Nick, benches. Let's take a break. Maybe have a dog. I think not. It's too cold to sit and eat hot dogs out here. Plus, the freaking dog ate them all. Happy hey, city boy. You should try standing under a freezing waterfall sometime. Crash can is empty, at least the place is well maintained. Oops. There was something, there it is. Well, Gord Lake is really big. Yeah. Hey Nick, why is it called Gord Lake? We did this one before. Before. Can't get over samurai dogs. Regional samurai dogs no list. Hey man, whoever calls their productive product the original first wins. Why don't you go add world famous to the sign? Or why don't you go add world famous to the sign? Hey, good idea! Have I done? I don't remember there being two things here. Oops. Didn't mean to click that.
Uh... Can I present something to nobody? Oh, okay. Hey, Lana, look at this! It's a metal detector! I know what that is. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna pick up Gordy, though. Unless he's been eating people's watches or spare change or something. Then. Am I supposed to observe? Here, do this. Hey, Nick. What? Don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no. I was just wondering why are camping pots and pans made of aluminum? I didn't talk about that in any of the law books. Or they didn't talk about that in any of the law books. Well, there's no law saying they have to be made of aluminum then. I'm not having this conversation. How come these are all back? Science is no camping, funny place to pick your tent. Hey, what if the sign said no sitting tents on fire? I don't think they have signs like that. Oh. All right. It's gotta be the boat, right? Ow, oh, that hurt. Nick! It's beeping! The metal detectors found something! That's not how that works, but we'll take it. Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. How do I have to check it out? Nick! CO2 canister? Look! Oh, an air tank. Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. <laughs> Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? Second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. An empty air tank. The valve is open and the banner of flags is wrapped around it. I think for devious value retrieved. There's more for us off that way. I doubt I'll find any helpful clues there. Small boat went to the shop. Doesn't look like anyone around. They probably closed because of the murder. There are some boats floating at the dock. The murder took place in a boat from the dock. Apparently, the police took actual, away the actual boat that was used that night. Oh, yeah, I was hoping there was going to be a bullet in one of the boats or something. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. Let's go talk to... What's the space? Hey, dude. Is this yours? What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Say, is this the air tank yours? <laughs> what? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Uh, must be a coincidence. There's string of flags everywhere these days. Like elementary schools. You were doing that when uh, you were under trial, but you weren't guilty, so... Dude, is it gonna be... Diva, that's her name. Is it gonna be Diva? And fucking... Maya called it with mafia stuff. Uh, and use car dealerships. Look, why would I need to take anyway to inflate something? Or go diving. Both of them work. You used to inflate that, didn't you? Uh, in inflate what? What else? Big puffy steel samurai. N now would you? Uh, why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Uh, actually, I'm. Um, See the compressor I always uh, used was on the fritz. So, so I tried using the tank to inflate it just once. And uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. Ask you more about it. Didn't go so well? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you think you could be a little more specific? <laughs> Come on. Look, it's embarrassing. So do we really have to talk about it? 
That's why I really don't want to talk about it. I tend to put my dick in it, okay? I heard about this, these blowies, and you know, I figured air tank, you know. Careless, careless. Uh, fine, whatever. It's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then, blam! There's a gunshot. Haha. <laughs> the valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank. And that tank there took off like a rocket. They took my poor deflated seal samurai with it. What? Up in the cord lake? It was that thing that people saw Gordy. Cause look at his flex. It looks like the picture. It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Um, was it take of the steel samurai you were trying to fill up blue away? What happened next? Well, all they have it on the 20th or so. The 20th, a week ago. Now, as far as I can see, the tank went flying out into the lake. I went out every night on a boat looking for it. Are you the other witness? I mean, Keonsei gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last with the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know what happened? No. That's too bad. Not bad at all. We've solved one of the mysteries, at least. Mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Yep. Uh, you! Well, Mr. Lloyd, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me? We found him. Huh? Oh, Gordy? Oh, we found him already. What? I haven't seen any monsters yet. Y'all for real? Gordy really exists? Wait, I need proof. You got a photo? Of course I have proof. No fair, Nick. It was when I went to the bathroom, wasn't it? That's when you made contact with Gordy. <laughs> went to the bathroom? When? Enough jabbering already. Let's say your proof. I need to take that samurai thing. This might work. There is air tank. What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here, a hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used his air tank and when the valve blew, the tank flew off into the lake. Apparently he made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang. I was right, Ooh, cool. The tank along with the still deflated samurai fell into the lake. At the same time, Couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This this is what I was gonna show if uh the air tank didn't work. This photo. Wait. So you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? <laughs> well, that's a five way to ruin a gal's dream. I'm sorry, Lana. Ah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info, like I promised. Or lot or lotta. So tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I have a feeling she's gonna be like, it's nothing. I just wanted you to find Gordy for me. I have heard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path there. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. We've been there like 12 times. Thanks, Lana, we will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. 
something else or something else yeah the night of the murder my camera clicked twice you know wait wait so you have another photo well yeah but there's nothing in it at all just the light i figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence so i kept it to myself well it might not be helpful at all but here take it just an empty lake taken oh it's timestamp an empty lake taken automatically at 11 50. that's gonna be significant well obviously because it was given us to us as evidence but so it's gonna be like i was there at 11 50. <sighs> excuse me bye now bye now y'all take care time for me to pack up and leave Oh, is that the last we see of Lotta? Poor Lotta! It's all, it's all Larry's fault. Legend still loves, lives on, I guess. A legend? Yeah, it's the legend of Larry. Familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. I've been here so many times, and finally someone's gonna show up. Hey, Nick! This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about! You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's check it out anyway. Knock, knock! There's nobody here. There's nobody here. There's nobody here. Caretaker shack. That was new. He has a parrot. How did he get in here? Whoa. Hey, buddy. Meg, is that you? Hey. Hey, is that, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Is he drunk? Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When your kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running an old man like me? Holly, the kids are home. Hello. Hello. What? Why was that green? N Nick, what's that? Parrot. The one on that perch. Hey. Yes? I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, honey. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello? Hello? Spot? Uh, excuse me. Okay, that's gonna be evidence somehow. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> what the fuck? He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. What the fuck? <laughs> he's blowing weird moles. Um, pasta shop? Uh, yep. You think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone? My father started it, you know, so that makes you two the third generation. Hey, yes, yes. Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of no tossing. No tossing. You too, geese. Yes, you'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler, the West. Is it pasta from Italy? Mag. Yes. You know, the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? 
Right, of course. Everybody knows that. Eh. Huh? How long do we have to keep this up? This all in the family should run. <laughs> this old man must know something about the murder. I'm not leaving until we find out what it is. This is wild. Wake up! Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here is the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Though, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days, damned if I don't understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. I think you get along well with the uh, old bag. Nick, this is going anywhere. This old man has witnessed tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way to get in getting information out of him. This no way this guy's a witness. I want to be a possible wrangler. I am. Alfredo, spaghetti, wrangle all that in my belly. Hey, I'm a lawyer. Is he gonna care? <laughs> I wake him up just to show him this. That's a lawyer's badge. Yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Ah, uh, yep. I got you figured out now. You're not, Keith. Fuck, I didn't observe his stuff yet. Nick! That's our, now's our chance to clear things up. Oh, was I supposed to do that? Um, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Maggie either. We're here investigating murder that took place in the lake the other night. Oh, shit, I was supposed to do that. Please help us. Ah, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. But I want one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Oh, God. Sure, I promise I'll run the wet noodle. Okay, we promise. <laughs> Nick, are you sure about this? We need the money because we kept screwing or spending all her film and stuff. We gotta find a way to make it ends meet somehow. Hey, anything could this case solve. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I, I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Oh, wait, didn't I just say... You too, Meg. Okay. He can't be the witness. He has no credibility. Yes! <laughs> you bring it here to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what is it you want to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello? Hello? Uh. Now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? <laughs> you care about this? You know about Gordy? Oh. There's gotta be something in here. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny he doesn't look like the type who would keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting me. He's running a pasta shop here. <laughs> That's right, Keith. I'm confused. Well, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello. It ignored me. What? You forgot Meg. You gotta call her name first. How you been? Hello? Hello? Interesting. Hey! Neat! This parrot's name is Polly! Whoa, that added as evidence. Our Ernst Weil companion is a boat keep or boat shop car taker. Answer the name Polly. They're added to the port record. What the fuck? Not, not bad at all. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. Oh, snap. The secret words? Polly! Oh, 
Lolly, what's your name? Lolly! <laughs> Cute! Maya's found a new friend. Okay, so we gotta find secret words. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should get do that at the office. I've always wanted one of those. We can sit down with our clients snug and warm and drink hot cocoa. What? Talk about murders? Oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. Is that a fishing pole? This fishing pole looks expensive. Fishing's all about the, having the right equipment. How are you supposed to catch anything with a two-cent rod? That's what I'd like to do as Detective Gumshoe. Can I go get the fishing pole from Gumshoe? Oh, he has a television in here too. Uh, uh, yep. Don't work though. Really? I picked it up from the dump after all. It figures that it doesn't work. Then why do you keep it? I don't know. It just looks right there. In the summer, I replace it with a mini fridge. <laughs> a broken mini fridge? Of course. I got that from the dump too. Nobody in their right mind would throw away a good cooler. I'm worried about this guy. Look a little safe. Now don't you go opening people's safes without their permission, Meg. Maybe later. Later. He always gets those sus eyes. Oh, there's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Yeah, isn't that a flounder up there? Of course. What's the point of going fishing in your own backyard? Deep sea fishing's the best. Mighty tasty, too. Right. My memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important old to Polly there. Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number of the safe? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. Dude, if Polly's gonna be the fucking witness, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. This guy should be... Yeah, he, sh he should be on some sort of assistance. Get himself hurt out here. All right! Hey, Polly, watch it. Well, uh, yeah. Eh, see, Nick? Well, takes a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick! Write the number down! Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Okay. Um. Will he? Oh shit. Hmm, Detective Pimshu is in here. Now yeah, he mentioned it. Didn't he say he had a meeting to go to? Oh, that's right. Let's come back later. Fuck, I was gonna try to get the fishing pole. Um... Oh, what should we do? I don't know. I've been in detention this whole time. Oh, you haven't? You've been out with me. I think I'll let you decide what to do, do you? Well... Any thoughts you want to share? Fuck. Poor Maya, she probably thought about Mia the whole time she was in there. Well, that was backwards and out of time. Uh, let's go. To... Still gonna be here? 
He's still here. Is he gonna be gone? How do we get him to leave? You hear about this? You know about Gordy? Oh! Here's my only friend in the world. Isn't that right, Polly? I uh, yep. He fell asleep. He fell asleep by me showing that. Don't wake up. Fuck. I yep. Uh, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir? Hey. Yes? It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad! You know something about this? Uh, yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes! Yes! I know all about that. I seen it. What? I did not expect that. What? Tell us, tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. And you're taking over the shop and all. Yeah, tell me. Huh. I forgot the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Uh, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. And I heard this bang, so I looked outside. And I heard another one bang. A little while later, this bow comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, but yep. What did he say? Ah, uh, yep. I forgot. Hey, Polly, what did he say? I'll remember tomorrow by four time, I promise. He didn't know earlier than that. You know what? Hey, little Terry was just here. Terry? Ah, uh, yep, the kid next door. You always used to make him cry, I remember. He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers going out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> he comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly! Polly! Have we forgotten something? Ah! Don't forget DL6! Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly! What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I mean, dad. You can't tell me this man does not look like an older version of this man. Okay, maybe not. I was just seeing like the longer hair.
He's got much bigger eyebrows. Uh, never mind. I thought I was being clever with like, maybe they were switching out what happened, but you can't fake the victim's body because it's a dead body, right? This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird probably know about DL6? Ooh, wrong voice. Why would that probably know about DL6? Did you figure out who that old man is? Oh! What? He locked the door from the outside, from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. What the fuck, bro? Excuse me. Oof. Oops. Oh, thank God he's back. Hey, pal, long golden. Time to see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? Oh, I was hoping he was going to give me the option to take more secret weapons. You know the boat rental shop down at the Gord Lake? Ah, uh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Ah. Uh, how'd you... Ah. Uh, that was supposed to be top secret. You know who the old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't seen... Been able to get straight answers out of him. I decided at first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, you have absolutely no idea. See, that's suspicious. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Uh ah! -uh. We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Andrew's father died. Oh, wait, that was when Andrew's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with the current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow the DL6 incident related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Uh, present. I'm gonna see if the guy left. Get out of here, butts. Shit. Uh, oh no, it's gone. Shit. Shit. Look at my face. What did my face do? Oops. Expensive looking cake. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, funny. Blah, blah, blah. Any information on the DL6 case? We gotta have some stuff in here, right? His desk. I've been spending more time on the couch watching TV. She's got stuff. Difficult looking legal books stand in the formidable row. They mocked me. I tried reading one and it made my head hurt. When I closed it, it slipped out of my hand and my foot hurt too. metal detector bag well, she's not even an option anymore
Oh, I can't even get in there anymore. And Polly mentioned DL6. Oh, I froze. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. I was not expecting that. Especially from a freaking parrot. How did I get in there, dude? What am I missing? Bird. Bird mentioned it. Was that a parrot? The old man's boat rental shop parrot. The parrot knew about the incident. That incident? Really, that's all the information that you need about the, the DL6? What? No fucking way. That was it? <laughs> Absolutely. You don't need... You can just, like, make up evidence. If you can just be like, the parrot said it. Holy poly, we've forgotten something. Don't forget about the 06. I'm pretty or I'm pretty sure the old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how do you how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait. What if? What if that old man was connected to DL6? I think that might be. I get ya. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. So there is a station's record room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Aha! That's all I needed was to say. You gotta trust the parrot. And in, in effect, trust me that the, a parrot said it. All right, way to go, this next becomes you. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess the time we face says worse past. Move to the records room. Well, that's amazing. Play Dusty. 10 years of files and 10 years of dust, I guess. Let's find the DL6 stuff quick. 15 years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through his fourth grade when he suddenly transferred because of DL6. Nick, I found out where the file was. Holy crap, that was fast. Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Holy crap, she's on top of things, dude. Uh, the case summary. First, I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like a summary. Hey! Summary, summary, found it! Look at her go, dude! Here you go. December 28, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. I have a feeling Von Karma's involved. That's why he wants to get this all closed out so quickly. The incident, took or the incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse we're in all the trial tomorrow? Or trial now? I can read. I promise. Looks like it. There's a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Quick. That looks like Edworth and his dad. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. That'd be scary like in the dark. What the? There was lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edward's father, wasn't it? That was Mr. Edward's father, wasn't it? He got shot through an elevator? He said that his father was shot before his very eye. So Miles Edward was one of the other passengers in the elevator. What the fuck? They were in an elevator? Dana on the victim, Edward's father. Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim here. Found it. 
Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had, he had lost that day's case in court and gotten in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles! Miles Edgeworth, of course. He was in the elevator with his father. I just figured that out. From the angle of the bullet and the other elements, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Two again, huh? Where have I heard that before? Huh, sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? Mm, that would be the guy that my mom... They, my, my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. How would a clerk do that? So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived. So much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm. Where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? Oh, it's the old man in the shack. He may be closer than we think. The old man in the shack. I guess I gen know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. I'll never get it out. Y you're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Yeah, we can just totally just take this. It's fine. No, one, no one's going to worry about it. Right. Probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left the trial tomorrow. I wonder how dad will do testifying in court. No, I want to go talk to him right now. Fuck. Oh, I wanted to go right back. Oh, I'm gonna have to grill him in court instead of getting information. That's gonna make things slightly harder. Shit. Back in fucking karma dumb. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edward. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, he's quiet. Very well, apparently prosecution is also ready. Oh, who is the guy here anyway? Mr. Von Karmer. All right, Mr. Von Karmer, you're opening a statement. Uh, very well, no opening statements, so. though. You're such a huge. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Is this where it's worth about all his, all his edge? Right, of course. Prediction. Today's trial will end in three minutes from now. This fucking guy, dude. Order, order. Get your mind, Karma. What is the meaning of your statement just now? You can't object to a fucking judge like that. Uh, must you ask everything? Must you question everything? It'll be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness. My decisive witness to the stand. That mysterious boat shop owner. Yep. Witness, state your profession. Ooh. 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 You guys get it? What's your profession? Yeah. <laughs> I am the proprietor of the restaurant. We do like what like. There's no such question. Uh, and uh, I also read boats. Night of the incident. You were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh yep, yeah, yes, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. Still haven't heard who this old guy is. Objection! Wait a minute. The witness hasn't said his name yet. Karma's gonna be like, what does it matter? And then he's gonna 
tell the judge to not care. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. <sighs> I predict this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Thank you, Judge. Uh, 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 well, um, I'm not really sure, I am. What do you mean? Or what do you mean? My, uh, uh, my memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. How can he be a witness? Uh, he can't recall, you see. Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. Okay, he's someone from... Uh, well, obviously, we know he's someone from the past, but... I think it was the... The clerk. Maybe. It was the night of the 24th. I didn't mean to push that button. It was... I was in the restaurant where I... I ran boats as usual. Then I heard a bang. Yep. When I looked out on the window, I saw a boat just floating in the lake. And I heard another bang. People were banging left and right. Just about then, the boat came back to shore and a man walks by my window. Very, very well. I'd like to begin the grass examination. Shut up, you. There's nothing to question in my witness testimony. That's not, that's not for you to say. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. That's, you, you don't make the rules here, Judge. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. Let's examine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well, we may begin. Yeah, get fucked. Ah! Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. Are you see? Sucks to suck, sucker. Well then, let's just take our time. You may grace examine the witness. Things are about to get truly wild. Uh oh. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, yep. Okay. It's after midnight, you say. <sighs> I, uh... Sorry, his voice is difficult to do. It makes me yawning. Uh, yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Uh, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. It's like a pliable memory. Von Karma could have just massaged his brain. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Uh, don't glare, lad me like that. I, uh, I remembered clearly I did, yep. You see, continue. Uh, okay. Is there anyone who can verify that? This bird? <laughs> well, I guess it probably could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Ray, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith. The prosecution concedes that we cannot provide the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. And I heard a bag. Oh, yep. Yeah. And where did the bang seem to come from? Stop falling asleep! <laughs> from, the, from the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, yep. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men on there, uh, yep. How do you figure? 
we can see them clearly. I uh, yep. At that time, that is. At the time. Then I heard another bang. I heard two gunshots total. I yep. That's what Lana said in her testimony yesterday. Just about. Whoop, whoop. Didn't mean that. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. He's not gonna like this, is he? By your window? Uh, yep, by my window. Right outside the window on my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me when I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. feeling about this it didn't say he didn't say oh he didn't say oh there it is that man was the defendant he was saying i can't believe he's dead uh, are you sure you sure about that <laughs> uh oh dad <laughs> Whoa. Dead, certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead. He was just walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him. That Edgeworth boy. What just happened? This sounds like decisive evidence, indeed. I see no room for doubt. On karma. Okay, that guy has something against Edgeworth, I think. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. A nice hat. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Oh, what am I doing? Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints of Edgeworth's right hand out of the gun and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. This is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Mm -mm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? I don't know what to do here. Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If we were telling, a, if he were telling a lie. It's a right. In a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. So, if he's, so you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Uh, uh yeah, we have evidence. It's no good. There's nothing I can do. What about that blank photograph? Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please, can you hear me, sis? Please, we need your help. Nick needs you. I, <laughs> I put an anti-medium grading material across the borders of the walls. Your sister can't reach you now. Three minutes was perhaps too high of an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. There must be a new record. Yeah, the witness may leave the stand. The fuck? This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Or is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant? This case is extremely clear. There I see no room for this misinterpretation of the fact. What? No! <laughs> this course finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Maya is gonna speak up. What? Nuh-uh. The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at the higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned.
There it is. Wait! Who is that just now? Huh? What? How'd you get Larry? You can't just walk up there. Very confused. Larry! Where are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I I was I was there in the park the night of the murder. Oh my god, my throat. I I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. He just invites himself up to the witness stand. I heard it. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. Good morning, Mr. Von Garma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony, and I realized something you said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I just sit here and let you call Edgy on. Can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. Oh my god, my throat is way too dry for this asshole. I'll testify, just let me! Order, order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Sure about that? I don't think so. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over! Nick! This is it! Larry's given us a final chance at this! He's right. If only it wasn't Larry. You can make things even worse. Mr. Andrew was supposed to... What the fuck? That was weird. Mr. Andrew was supposed to just declare guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor. There's another witness in our... It is our duty to hear him speak. Right here. Right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Why not? Hmm. I overturned my own d ruling. Now we speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Fuck yeah, dude. That's right. Karma, sit down. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. Fuck yeah, Judge, tell him! What? The court will adjourn for five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Holy shit. Ooh, that was too close. Hard to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he, f and he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, it's worth. Mm. You say something right. Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's... It's nothing. Hmm? Mr. Edward, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? What's that? I can't do his voice because Butts' voice fucks me up. Are oh, your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Is it gonna be the murder weapon from when his dad died? When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. And I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. Can you put your hands all over the, the fucking trigger and stuff? Oh, come on, dude. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? To make sweet, sweet love. I know you've been craving it. Odd Karma has only ever run perfect trial. Perfect trial. Oh, that's me. Perfect trials. Perfect prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has led someone he hasn't even talked to testify before court. And that someone 
This is Larry. You're gonna come in to save the day for us, huh? What are you getting at? People like these tests will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. I'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything was on Larry now. Court is now back in session. Good news. These tests find this court event everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about us being this being our big break. At night, I was out on a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I, uh, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in the rental job dock. Is it you that said I can't believe you said? I just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. Well, that was an unusually big testimony, even for this court. Yeah. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Don't come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Larry, maybe he's looking for Beyonce's love in the lick. Don't steal the song, don't go chasing waterfalls. Lake? He's like, Lake? Waterfall? I was looking for the waterfall. I was on the boat in the lake. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Uh, um, well, okay. Uh, first of all, what time was it? Okay, I thought I was going to get penalized. Oh. It was after 11 when I went out on the boat. At that time, everyone had gone home for the night. I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. Why were you on the boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something I could, uh, I, and I found it. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Brick, what was it you were looking for? Shut up, you. You scared? What the witness was searching for is ir irrelevant. You don't know that? Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat back to the rental shop dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around midnight, yeah. You're not sure. Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. <laughs> then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard of this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order. Order. Well, Mr. Brett. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. But, so after I heard the single shot, I went home. Really? You didn't try to report it at all? You only heard one bang, they're correct? Yeah. Hmm. Well, Nick. Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry, I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Oh, uh...
Shit. Shit. Okay. Alright, let's do a save. So I don't get myself into trouble here. I looked for the link, but I didn't see a boat. Actually, let's what do we what do we have available to us? There it is. Okay, good. Wait a second, Larry. What? Only heard one bang? You sure? That's what I said. Miss Lana Hart testified yesterday. She heard two bangs. And the old man just said the same thing. They both heard, both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all? What they said. Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. You gotta treat me like nice and stuff, all right? No, that's not at all how that works. Mr. Butt. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Fucking... Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Listening to something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Order, order, and stop that booing. <laughs> Mr. Butt, you listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? What a crime. Or that a crime? I listen to my radio, everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Could one of the gunshots be an echo? I was Von Karma. <laughs> it was I, Von Karma. That's a great name. How you doing? Welcome in. Mm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? My opinion, this guy's an idiot. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor shoddy testimony. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Wright. Should he continue the testimony? He needs to get the fuck out of here. Continue. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Oh, nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butt. Please give your testimony. Be sure to include all details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. Fuck. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, but believe me. Fuck, this sucks. Oh, God. This is gonna be like a slog, isn't it? It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. So I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. And I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Oh? You were listening are you listening to your radio at high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? Boy. I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge. Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe his, tes his testimony. Wait, Your Honor. Witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshots. Excuse me? DJ? God. An announcer. Announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway. What this means is when he heard the sound. No music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so you could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very, very well, Mr. Raid. I can't believe I'm just continuing the charade. It's a slog every time Larry talks. Yeah, he is... He has two brain cells, and they're each fighting for last place. Only being, yeah, I don't care about that, but we're pressing him on all of it. So you turn on the radio. Right. 
I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't... You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve alone? Why were you out there? And what about your girlfriend? Why aren't you talking? I'm so confused. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's why I was listening to an old Crest Radio show. Request show on the radio, see? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? He's gonna be like, it's not relevant. It has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Brett. How loud was your radio set to that night? Okay, I didn't get punished for that thing. Goodness. I was listening to the real booming loud like. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. Any red headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on inside at all. But I sure, but I heard, sure heard the gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can. Yeah, I can't prove it. I can remember that moment was real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know. What? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when he heard it, too. That, well, we need to know. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. Impossible good for knowing what a DJ said to us. Because we could essentially point it to a time. Indeed, Mr. Brad Carman has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason we should care. Oh. I have a feeling it matters. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh. Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Right, very well. Mr. Butt, please, Butt, please miss, testify to the court. What was the radio answer saying when you heard the gunshot? Can be. It wasn't. I can't believe he's dead, huh? Just when she said, "Hey, it's almost Christmas," I heard the gunshot. Almost Christmas. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard, but there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. We've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. I think I got it. Let's save real quick. The blank photo. That's like right before Christmas, too. Fuck. Oh, shit. Really? Someone cursed us. I heard the gunshot. I'm gonna hurt it too. Oh, the time conflicts between he said almost Christmas and the gunshot happened at 12.15. I knew it was one of those. I just chose the other one first. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't get scared that easily. It's something the man who reads to write. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. Photograph is there a reputable proof of that fact. I see every time we send the food we take him in the gun figured Mrs. Hart's camera. 225. Yeah. 15 minutes after midnight. Oh, you just said that. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. Or 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order. Order. What does this mean? 
to pry witnesses or gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The lying idiot. The court, the court witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Really, Mr. Reed? What do you think by Mr. West's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Well, I got to go on. Larry is not mistaken, Your Honor. <sighs> you heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. He, he baited me. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. How many evidence there was a gunshot before midnight? Wait. I guess this one would count, right? No, not that. This one. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart. With our automatic camera. Timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh. Hmm. But there's nothing on the link in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown on the photograph. It's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken with by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in the response to loud noises. Ah! Correct. There was a loud noise in the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Yona. That, er, that is, in fact, that is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Yona, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Be fooled, Judge. A camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose hurt. Hey, my nose was clear that night. Come in, come here. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Be sure the court evidence if you have any. I have none. Three times. Fuck. Oh, something about this has been bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses had testified yesterday about two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. Okay, I was right, I think. It, it didn't do uh, the music drop, so I thought it was going to be like, you're, you're an idiot, you're lying, you don't know what you're talking about. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. The third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order. Order. Hmm. That would make sense to the evidence we've seen so far. However... This leaves me wondering exactly what did happen the night of the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? Have it. Have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murder in the case had the same idea as the murder in that case. Or the murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. 
I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Alright. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Alright, Nick. Your Honor. Excuse me, Mr. Wade. The testimony just now has cleared up the entire case. That's it. I think it's trying to show that someone was trying to clear up their best from the past. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you finally realized the truth? There can be no other murderer than Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Vong Harma. The man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Harmon, were on that boat. We don't know that. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and missed Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party as the other man on that boat. I mean, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Reed? We have photographic evidence at the time of the shooting. Oh, wait. We have photographic evidence at the time of the shooting. The time of the photo was 15. But Larry heard gunshot 25 minutes before that. Yeah, I was going to say he was killed, and then they set it up. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edwards could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edwards and Hammond, Edwards and the murderer. Murderer and Hammond. Got to be Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 1150, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell. Fuck, my finger keeps spazzing out and it's getting worse. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of this. Ludicrous Ludo! Mr. Wade, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... I don't know yet. It's not Lada. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know. You haven't figured it out yet. Uh, again, you waste my time. I don't know, because he never told us. Oh, the guy. that passed out. Yeah. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where, where, where did he do this? There weren't any boats in the lake then. That's exactly it. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake to shoot someone? I suggest real scene of the crime was not a, on a boat. What? Where then? Where did the murder take place? Tell the judge where the murder took place. Why wouldn't it take place here? Take 
Sure, of course, the boat shop where he lived. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. You have proof that the boat shop wasn't seen as a crime? Call Larry's testimony, if you will. Yeah, he's looking for his thing. No one else was out on the lake. The night he was out on the lake, a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns it to the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? Boat shop. Very good, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, what happened that night at Court Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure, out this, figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond, in, called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot... That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went into the middle of the lake. Why would they choose to go in the middle of the lake? That's a big question I have. And who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Braden? And who fired the pistol on the boat? Why is this a question? The boat shop care figure. Oh, he just wanted to fire into the uh, the water, I guess. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. Shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh. Details. Details. No, this Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? Camera. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then, he jumps into the lake himself. Yep. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. We see. Is someone looking from the edge of the lake? It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, and he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night in Gord Lake. Wow, even Karma was... unexpressive. Bailiff! Bring out the witness... Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Hell yeah, Judge! Look at him judging! Proud of him. Very well. But we are waiting for the caretaker. Would like to ask the defendant, Ms. Miles Edwards, a few questions. Mr. Edwards, please take the stand. Oh? Oh, is this where we're gonna ask him about the DL6 incident? Oh, yeah. Mr. Edwards, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said has, was mostly correct. Astonishing, so actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. One letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the bow shop by the lake at quit midnight on Christmas Eve. It doesn't sound weird to you? He, had some, he said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? 
I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Caleb. Ghana, sir. Caleb, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. Here's another boat shop either. What? You guys fucking... What should I do? Find him. Huh. Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Yeah, so he... He was faking all that time. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. The search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? I was talking to Edgeworth. One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. What the fuck? We were talking to Edgeworth. I was learning. Hey, Nick, you did it. Yeah. At least we got out from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Here, once I sifted through his unique testimony... Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? I look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. Probably going to get off uh, uh, the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I don't know how. I'm sorry. But I feel it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth. No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get off my... I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... I want to drain your sweet nugs. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare of that. A memory of a crime that I've committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. <laughs> Needs to cut in and out. Or out and immediately back in right there. We continued. Another TBC. in our offices. Who was Mr. Edge was talking about? I wish he was just said it. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth was killed? Or Mr. Edge was killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. The painful memory has been troubling him recently. Oh wait, that's me. The painful memory has been troubling him recently, but he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? Man, I'm swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? I can't do his voice, it's ruining my throat. Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes. I do remember feeling faint. <sighs> right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Shouldn't you be worried about Keonce? Confused. Right, Nick? Huh, a me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edwards in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. What are you doing here? Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edwards so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true, but when we first met him, he's kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney? Or back when he wanted to become a defense attorney? Wait, was that when you were two classmates? Yeah, in grade school. He saved me. Miles and Larry. He saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, Larry, 
what's he talking about? Uh, oh, uh, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Oh. Okay, Nick, how was it? I'm gonna hear this story today and that's final. Okay, okay. Fucking butts, man. You are, yeah. Can't trust him for anything. Can't rely on, for, on him for anything. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. It was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember Larry? Spring end of third grade? Kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared. 38 bucks still inside. Oh. Yeah, now that you mention I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold and I'd skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with the, me as the defendant. <laughs> How traumatizing. I didn't do it. Kelly, he did it. Kelly, it was you. Thief, give me the money. You're such a meanie. I won't play with him. Just admit it, you did it. You can't hide the child. I'm not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah, you're boring. You got more boring. So you can't be allowed to really waste. My library can be good. If I just said that, you would just throw off the bank. Oh my god. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. That's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know... Oh, wait. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me. Like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. Ha! <laughs> a little objection. You shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. We should all be ashamed. Amateurs. Holy fuck, he's a third grader. Smile. Yeah, you get him. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? Whoa. Oh. And you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. Your Honor? Amaya, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? That butt? <laughs> this is always how it is. Everybody's getting up on picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he needed to do it. He didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. What the, what the, what the, what the, what the, what? Okay, we're just gonna accept that that happened. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Mm, yeah, well, I was just lucky they took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought it would, I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the bots. Okay, what happened after the trial? Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few minutes later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline had something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. 
the why? What happened? I mean, that's not edgy. I used to know him all, at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I didn't know how... I don't know how many times he never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he had become... who he became. That's when I decided... Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why he became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? Oh my god, this is a love story. Shiny eye, that's a glaucoma. Go get that checked out. If I was a defense attorney, I knew I'd have to meet him whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me and I believed in him. He's in pain and no one on and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Oh, Nick. So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh yeah. That and the fact that you can't pay me anyway. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, uh, Nick! Nick! We have to save us earlier versus the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's, there's that rental bow shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. And settle for who? I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Barry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did it! If you weren't, if you weren't there, there, I'm sure Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, the boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just guy. I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. On edge. I mean, he didn't really know he's telling the truth about that night. Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us too? It's worse than who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me. Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me. That was mean. Uh, actually, yeah. What do you mean, Nick? Oh, enough of this silent treatment. The fuck just happened? That was mean. Did my... Okay, my evidence got cleared out a little bit. Hey, Larry, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Oh, it's hot up there, hot. I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. He seems too happy to care about anything. I show him. <gasps> Excuse me. Larry happened. Larry always happens. It, yeah, it's the, the curse of the Larry. Let's go see if Gumshoe has anything. Hmm. Like the gumshoe hasn't come back yet. Gumshoe! He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. Bow shock, top caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if that's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, gumshoe. Okay, so that's not where you need to go. Nothing's gonna be here. Oh. Let me ask you about the incident. You look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeways, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. The lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch? Ooh. That Larry's voice has fucked up my throat so bad that it's even difficult to do his voice now. Lunch money? Oh, oh right. Yes, I remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't know. Did you know the trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney? Ridiculous. 
Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound kind of like... It does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to become a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals. I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator was my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attor attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen, oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Mon Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I've learned everything I know of the courtroom techniques from him. And you should be able to tell us ways to thwart them. Oh, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with it, with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. Not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty. Perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear... We do everything in his power to make it go away. <gasps> Maybe he did the killing. Because he found a weakness in something and wanted to take him out. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself. I'll admit. No kidding? Okay. This is gonna be sad. Nick, no! That's a photo of his father, don't show him that! You're right. Now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Uh, nothing. Hmm. Okay. What about this? It was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, the Statue of Limitations rolls out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? Not at all. But, even for that, if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Sorry, it's worse. What about this bird? Sorry, I'm not sure I can help you with that. Mm, I'm an attorney. Okay. Is he back? They have information on that incident, right? He's out again. When does it work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later.
Gumshoe, there you go. Hey, pal! Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Close one today, hey! I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. What? Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you. We know who really did it. You mean the bow shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come with me. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. I believe in you. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, well, not a thing. <laughs> no one can go into the woods today. Fuck. Woods. Lana was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. You got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lana's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Fuck. But can I not go in at all? Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore! It's like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. He's been strangely quiet about... Beyonce. Ugh, my nose is just... The rental shop. That old cult here, old caretaker got away. Yep. Never imagined he might be the real murderer. <gasps> we can talk to the bird now, right? I hope. <clears throat> is that what this face? I know they're clearing the float anywhere. Why are you here? Ah, hey, hello, hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth are like the scent of the first lemon you see. Mr. Grosberg, this is no time to be out of reminiscing. The search was trailing tomorrow. Yeah, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, it worth should be fine, right? Well, er, well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not so sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come up my office at once. I may be able to offer some assistance. Why are you out here? Thanks. Bye. Why are you out here? What do you think Mr. Rossweed was doing here anyway? Who knows? I'm gonna go talk to that bird. Nobody's home. Hello, hello. Hey, it's Polly. Wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Oh, hello. I can't believe he'd run off and leave this poor parrot to fend for herself. We're doing this first. That reminds, that reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number of the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number of the safe? One, two, two, eight. What? Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm pretty sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. But hey. He keeps a look, right? But there must be something of value in there. Right in the open. I'm not so sure. Okay. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in there is a letter. A letter? Aw, uh, boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. Handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Perfect letters, you might say. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your re revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now's the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The two? The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out of the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. Ruined your life.
Why would someone want the defense attorney and the prosecuting side dead? Because if the guy got off as an instant, then his life's not ruined. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. We killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth. He was following instructions. What could, what could have written that letter? Fucking karma with his perfect handwriting? What does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? One thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe and of the court where you get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. There's no details. Murder and setup. Nothing else in the safe. Yeah, or get rid of it. Wonder why the I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he came back here after the trial. Yeah, you'd think once the deeds were done, you would burn that or something. Ah! What's wrong? Ah! Oh no, no, never mind. What? Tell me. That's when I saw the TV, I remembered. Showing a pink princess special this week. <laughs> oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. I thought I was clicking on the trash can. The fishing pill looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, just steal the stuff. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, we can just leave him the metal detector in exchange. Uh, maybe we should better not. Hey Nick, some people used to put pictures of fish up on the wall in the post about them. Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right, but don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away. The most was the caretaker, and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Doesn't look like he used his kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What? You thought he was telling the truth? Maybe you should talk, take care of Polly Nick. Probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure there is something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. Says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's gonna hate me. <sighs> oh, I was hoping to be able to, like, talk to the bird. Go to Grosberg's. Actually, let's go here first. Never mind. What day is it, Nick? Yeah, I know. No time to waste. Let's get going. He's still not here. Check it out. Edward, see this letter? Mm hmm. This came out of the safe in the shop where the boat rental rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Who's that old guy anyway? I I don't know. Could he be an instant dependent you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he's following in the slitter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. That was the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men. Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations in the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? 
Do you know who he is? I, I mean, we've kind of, it's been alluding to it's this Yogi guy this whole time. Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi! The suspect in the DL6 incident. One who was found innocent. Yeah, why would he t get revenge? That doesn't make sense at all. That doesn't make any sense. How would they... He was innocent. How was that ruining your life? What do you think we should do now, Maya? You know, you would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. That's your word. Well, had any good ideas? It's all tied to the GL6 incident. We better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a hold on Edgeworth and it won't let go. Yeah, we know that. Everywhere we go, nothing's happening. <clears throat> Wait, can we go back to the... No, not here. Can we go back to the... Damn it. I was hoping to be able to go back to the evidence room. Alright. I think you have to talk to us about some things. It was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow on December 28th, the statute of limitations will out. Tomorrow, could that be coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper... Yeah, we did this. Fuck. To make sure Edward doesn't have him top. Maybe? Oh. I always forget to do that again. Thank you. Johnny Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. How would your life get ruined? The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there in there for some... For so long gone, look for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us and in that little box. We became unsettled. Uh, help! I can't breathe! Quiet, I said, quiet! You're making this... You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! You're burning through oxygen, getting psyched up like that. Don't shout. Yeah, see? Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring, bed staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yagi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporarily insanity. In the end, I lean past the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? Sutter tells him to give revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Yes, thank you, Maya. Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. Probably. I'm your attorney. You mean the nightmare? It's the nightmare I've had. The memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? The memory of a murder. I think... I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? The wet kind, didn't you hear? The sweat. The dream about my father's killing. In the dark. Help, I can't breathe. 
All right, is it quiet? You're making this. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help! Help! Get us out. We just did this. Can't breathe. You're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air! I'll, I'll stop you. Oh shit! Uh, what? What are you? Stop breathing my air! No, father. He's attacking father. And I see the pistol laying, lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from the day of the court or the bailiffs. The days I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my mother! Bang. <laughs> you make sure Edward doesn't... Oh, I just read that. And now, Edward, that scream my wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that was wrong in my ears for the past 15 years. You need to see, go to therapy, my dude. But it's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. You think about it that way the letter makes sense get your revenge on miles edworth think about it though he was really innocent that's why he wanted revenge against me he was innocent though w revenge for what great edworth y you mean it was me i was a true criminal in dl6 i shot my father this is bad what are we gonna do nick what can we do i don't know I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about DL6 incident, maybe. Bird. There is, Nick! There's someone else who knows about DL6. The fucking bird, mate! Let's go talk to us a fucking bird, mate! Not those birds. Those birds don't talk. Shut up! You're not the important birds. This bird. A lot of plot lines in this game can be solved with therapy. Yeah, yeah dude. Hey! Bird! Fuck! I was so excited. I was so excited! God damn it. No. Oh wait, yeah, I need to come here first. Oh, he's back. Mr. Rosberg, you didn't come in here clearing your throat. Hi, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what happened. It's me, Mr. Edward. He... <laughs> hey. uh. I see. Oh, Edward's empty shot his own father. It's only a dream, only a dream! I wonder. What? If that little case, then why... If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also consider this. Yogi White certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edwards. Why? So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edwards' dream could not... was not a dream, it was real. Are you in on it? As you imagined. Miles Edwards threw the pistols to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. No, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career of a bailiff was irre irrevocably wrecked. Oh. Okay, if that happened, then maybe. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edwards. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. That doesn't track at all. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without fear. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one fear now that I come to think about it. Your mentor. Your mentor. Be a fake. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. 
Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. As a result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edwards tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. Gregory Ed er, when Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called in a spirit medium. Why would he be killed? Karma killed him. I'm convinced Karma's involved. How does your mother, Misty Fay? I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff Yanni Yogi. Yet, Yanni Yogi was found innocent. That's where my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was... She was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. What are you saying? He falsified his testimony. And Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility, not the less. What? None of this tracks. Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was fully lost. I wonder what had it have become of Von Karma. Were he alive? Oh, oh, this is a letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter. And he killed Hammond. The boy killed Robert Hammond. Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients in that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. He got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? Okay, that would make sense. Why you'd want to carry out revenge on both of them. Y'all understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? You have any idea who wrote this? Karma. Hmm. Could it be Manfred Bone Karma? On karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy. Fuck yeah! This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I'm putting you up on the trial. Where the testimony stand? Putting it stand, whatever. I usually see this. See it all the time in the court report. What? But that means the one who is your who told Mr. Yogi to kill us? Correct. Manfred von Karma himself fucking called it. What does this mean then? Why would von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Because he was fucking involved. This incident took place 15 years ago. So tomorrow we'll see the comp completion of no one, not one but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage the DL6 engine has done will never be erased. Please. Whatever. Yeah, something... something sussy. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edwards had accidentally killed his own father. I'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. I'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edwards guilty. Oh no. What? How could Von Karma know about Edwards passing then? Even Mr. Edwards thought it was just a nightmare. He fully told him. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both a persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edwards by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edwards in court and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Oh God. What happened in the trial between Edward's dad and Von Karma? Ooh, the music cut out. Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edwards accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. 
I know we lost the trial, Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, accusation stood. All the evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. He's trying to get it wiped. Gregory Edwards dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Well. Oh. Must have been quite a shock to Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the band. It was the first and last vacation he's taken in many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. <laughs> in any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty up upset him quite a lot. Odd. If you wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? When Karma's going to bring deal six, bring him deal six, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edward pleads guilty to deal six? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I I just believe in Edward's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick, Mr. Edward admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Is that right? If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Rosberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. I know it's normal stream time, but I'm trying to get to somewhere that feels like a good stopping point. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone wants to be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like there's something Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if you could check out the records room again. Well, no, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess the Minister Von Kama is in there now anyway. What? He can go in as long as he's in there. On Karma? Yeah, he just arrived, actually. He's falsifying fucking records. On Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry! Oh, shit's about to go down. Go see as always. We were here only yesterday. I'm sure they... I haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Or Von Karma. Yeah, what the fuck? This this is open, though. Oh, one of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Or, hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! File for deal six. It's completely empty. What? We're catching you in your fucking falsifying self, asshole. What are you doing here? Nick! Von Karma! You. How do you know my name? Does he not recognize us? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? Shut up, Maya. He doesn't recognize you. We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edwards' defense team. Why would you say that? Defense team? <clears throat> I beg your pardon. You see, I really remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me, needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. He actually didn't do that. We could have got a scot free. Why would you present anything to him? Why would you present anything to him? None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. And you know what? That's what we're gonna... Hold off for the evening. None of this makes any sense. You, you don't... Show the perp. 
all your evidence against them. You don't do that. His smile? Yeah, he's definitely a robot. Also, is... Is my audio and camera not synced? It, OBS used to be like exact copy of sync and stuff. And now it's not. So I can't trust anything anymore. It's uh, it's really unfortunate. I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. It looks synced. Cool. Thank you. All right. It's slightly past stream time, which is fine. I will continue playing this uh, through the week. Up until Friday, then we're going to play some more Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, hopefully finish up Shadow Hearts' little uh, Dark Justicier um, quest line, I guess. I'm excited to see what happens there. Um, if she goes full evil or not. And then uh, we'll continue playing that next week. We're going to keep playing this as well, I believe. We're still on the first one, right? It's a trilogy, so there's three whole games, and we're still in the first yeah. so um that's what's happening and then rebirth kicks off next week as well super excited for that uh let's see so, uh we've started the times we have to start going into the office again twice a week which sucks um and then a third time every other week which sucks so um tomorrow i'll be going in as well as wednesday and so we'll have to see how my uh my schedule if my schedule will change for streaming or whatnot because of that because going to the office is sucks and exhausting and frustrating uh, that's mostly what it is um and things are still not working anyway so going to the office and things not working sucks anyways I, if it's not working in the office why don't i just stay home where it's also not working so anyway uh thank you so much everyone for hanging out this this game is definitely taking uh, a bunch of turns that I did not expect. Um, but I am looking forward to more. Hold on a minute, we gotta... gotta... Some little bot in chat. Get out of here! Get out of here, bot. No one wants... No one wants any of your bullshit. Also, I'm very sleepy. Um, I did have a nap today, but... And, uh, I'm... I'm ready for bed. Did we go for a raid? Can we send some love out? Oops. It's absolutely a love story, dude. Like, all the little bit information they give us just makes me believe more and more that love story for Edgeworth and uh, our guy. You know what? I'm not going to go for a raid because I already took off my headset and I'd have to turn them on so I could hear people talking and hang out for a bit. But I can feel the sleepies already hitting me again. So, sorry, my friends. Uh, I'm not going to go for a raid. Although, if you are looking for someone to go hang out with, I can go tell you that. Uh, I did see Lee was streaming. Lee's playing some 16. He's going hard on that. I'm, I'll definitely be lurking in his stream at the very least. Hale's also playing Sea of Thieves. Kami is playing Blue Oak Bridge. I don't know what that is. And Kim, of course, is doing her Mystery Mondays and... Oh, where'd she go? Kim! There you are. She's playing Nancy Drew. Which Nancy Drew is she playing? She's playing Nancy Drew, Trail of the Twister. Not sure what that is, but that's her thing. Every Monday is Mystery Mondays and a lot of Nancy Drew and stuff. So, I'll be lurking in uh, their channels and stuff, but I'm gonna be going pretty much straight to bed. Again, Kira, thank you so much for this game and this trilogy, dude. I'm I'm having an absolute blast. I hope you're enjoying it and I'm not uh, frustrating you or anything with it. Um, yeah, I'm very surprised uh, at the, uh, the the writing's great, the art's great, it's goofy, and uh, it just it, it ticks all the bark boxes, right? But uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Remember to spay new to your pets, adopt them, shop, donate to rescue if you can afford it, or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. This is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and races out that are very much in need. Anyways, I'm Invasive. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for letting me be your streamer tonight. I heavily appreciate it. And I'll catch y'all next time. See ya. Get it. Get it. Let's go get some foodies. Let's go.